doing guys welcome to the channel Courtney Scott here with Goodworks tractors we got a Kubota and a John Deere hood as well as a rhino hide canopy gonna do some drop tests on them today not dropping the hoods but dropping stuff on them so we've lined some realistic things up here and some not so realistic things but if these don't do the job breaking the hood we're gonna find something that does tell you what if you would do me a favor if you enjoyed the video would you give me a thumbs up hit that button right down below there's a subscribe button right next to it as well. If you haven't done so yet, I'd encourage you to do so and read through that description right underneath the video if you're in the market for a tractor or a cool tractor attachment. Okay, so this is not a scientific test. I'm sure you can pick apart everything I do here. I paid a few hundred bucks to get this Kubota hood. It's a used hood off of eBay. I ended up having this John Deere hood. It does have a slight bow right here. Um, it was replaced under warranty, so using that. And then I do have this rhino hide canopy. So if you've seen the videos online, there's a couple John Deere videos showing they drop a shot put on one of these plastic or polymer hoods. And then there's another side-by-side -side video with a Kubota and John Deere hood with a different dealer dropping bowling balls at the same time on both hoods. One of the common comments that's found online is, Real tractors don't have plastic on them. This stuff just cracks and breaks, and that is certainly true of the very old tractors, the early generations like the garden tractors and, and early compacts that had the composites on there. They were very brittle. They would break over time. I found these newer composites to be a lot more durable. In fact, a few years ago, I was out of my hunting lease with a 3046R, accidentally knocked over a five inch diameter tree. It came almost right on top of me. It came down slow, so I had time to get off the tractor, but landed this way kind of front to back and ended up kind of pinched underneath the, the tail light as well but there was hardly a scratch there certainly wasn't broken and uh, i'll see if i can dig up that video and show you but a five inch tree did nothing to this that was a summertime we're out here right now it's at least in the single digits it's early on a monday morning and in, in uh, mid-february so we're going to see how these do i'm not obviously too worried about the steel hood we pulled out some random things here to drop on the hoods. You know, a piece of firewood, say you had a bucket full of firewood and one piece slips out and falls down onto your hood. A wrench, why not? Maybe it's in your garage and falls off or uh, a tuba, a grease, you know, that could fall off from a shelf in your garage as well. Then to some more impractical things, you know, like a bag of um, salt here. It could be a bag of dirt or mulch. Again, I suppose that could be in your bucket and somehow roll back. That would be uh, pretty dangerous. And then if we survive all of those, we're going to try this 41 pound suitcase weight and see if it can hold up to that as well hey if you want to have a little bit of fun hit pause right now and leave a comment down below which one do you think is going to break that john deere plastic hood the grease the wrench the wood the salt the weight or are we going to need something bigger let's find out really quick before we get started i do want to mention i had these hoods sitting outside for the last two days i wanted to make sure they got a nice cold soak we didn't just pull them out from inside the shop so they've been chilling in this single degree and teens weather from uh, the highest to the lows over the weekend okay so first thing we're going to drop is this tube of tacky red grease it says net weight of 14 ounces on it you know i've got one set of hoods here i'm particularly concerned about the polymer if we break this thing too early there goes the video so i'm going to try to drop things evenly onto each one so you of course could check these at them you could drop them right on end we're going to try to give these things a fighting chance let's give her a shot Well, in case you're wondering, the tacky red looks really good. No damage here at all. Same thing with uh, both the hoods. You can't see anything. I tried to hit them right in the middle. Maybe, the, well, not a scratch. It's just some ice compacted down. So no damage of any kind. Let's move on to the next. Oh, for the record, this Rhino Hide canopy, I have it in here just because uh, Don McCoy, the owner of Rhino Hide, He's done some crazy tests with it as well. It really is a very tough canopy. I've already dropped actually a suitcase weight on here in a past video. 
We have it here just to kind of highlight the toughness and durability of this canopy versus a lot of the others that are on the market. So if you're looking for a good solution, uh, go to the link below down in the description as well and you get 5% off with code GWT. Next up here, let's just go with a piece of split firewood. You know, say you have a bucket full of firewood, you accidentally rock it too far back and whoopsie daisy, down it goes. Let's see if these hoods can handle it. Okay, so round two with the piece of firewood. You know, again, I'm trying to drop these fairly evenly just to, just because. But uh, no damage seen here at all on that Kubota hood. Same thing can be said for the John Deere hood as well. Very impressive so far. And of course, nothing to worry about on the Rhino hide. Next up here, let's just try a wrench. Let's just say you have it on a shelf inside your shop, accidentally gets knocked off and falls down. We'll see what happens. Well, again, our wrench is okay, so nothing to worry about here. We can still use this just like we need to. You will notice there is going to be some paint missing right here from where the uh, Kubota took an impact. No dent that I can really see, though. Just a little bit of missing paint. No big deal. The John Deere hood looks... I can't see a scratch anywhere on here. I mean, there's some existing scratches, so now I realize under certain lighting conditions, you may be able to pick up some scratches that I can't see right now, but at least it's not going to be anything very significant. Same thing on the Rhino hide. There could be a scratch here. There were some existing scratches already on it. Hard to say. Either way, it's nothing very significant. Okay, so we are adding a couple more things. Two inch wrench, some chain. I'm just not satisfied with the kind of damage that we're seeing. I want it to break at some point. Let's see if these do it. I see some more uh, paint chips out of the hood all along here on the Kubota. I don't really see any dents though, so just a little bit of, of paint chipping. Over here on the John Deere hood, nothing. Nothing I can see. It had some ice build up just because of when the, uh, the chain covered in snow made contact, but no cracks. I can't even see any scratches. Same thing over here on the Rhino hide. Nothing as uh, expected besides some compressed snow turned into ice there. All right, we got the two inch wrench right here. We're gonna see what this does, the biggest wrench that I have on hand. Ooh, there's a nice crease. Okay, so with the wrench, dropping it this way was actually too wide, so it kind of took the full impact right across the hood. You can see, wouldn't really call it a dent, but it's definitely the paint has been disrupted going uh, left to right across the hood. Now over here on the John Deere hood, I honestly, I don't see a mark or a scratch anywhere. The only thing I now notice is right here, this little paint scuff. I don't know when that happened. I just noticed it. We'll have to check the tape on that. Rhino hide. Same story as always, I don't see any damage of any kind anywhere on here. Okay, next up, had this handy 50 pound bag of salt pellets, so we're gonna see what it does. <laughs> oh, a dent. Yeah, a dent right in there. Smushed it. Oh!
All right, so the 50 pound bag of salt pellets is where we started to see some damage, put a nice dent in this Kubota steel hood. However, the John Deere hood didn't make it out alive. See a pretty significant crack all the way through a good portion of it. That would be a, a frustrating experience, no doubt about it. Still nothing. Now I will say, of course, got to take some variables into consideration here. A ton of support area with very little, um, you know, space underneath to flex. You know, there's a lot of space underneath that John Deere hood to, to flex, but that's just the design of the hood and the material. So we're just working with what we have. Okay, we got the 41 pound suitcase weight. Obviously our John Deere hood has seen better days, but we're gonna see how the Kubota hood takes it as well as the Rhino High Canopy. Well, we lost a little bit of paint on our suitcase weight, but I think we'll still be able to use it, so that's a good thing. Pretty good dent going on now on the Kubota hood. Don't worry, I think we can pound that out. The, uh, the John Deere hood, well, it didn't do it any good, I'll tell you that. Pretty much the end of the line for this guy. However, our Rhino hide canopy still holding strong. I can see maybe, maybe the slightest of dent right in this area here. Could have been there already, but if that's the worst thing that's happened, it's holding on like a champ. Don, what do you think? Can you uh, make one of these canopies in the shape of a John Deere hood? The good thing about a Kubota hood or any steel panel is the fact that you can pound it right back into shape. Good as new. All right, so even though our John Deere hood has been destroyed, there's still a section hanging on, all right? So we're gonna give this one last test. We're gonna run them over with my 5115M, my 115 horsepower John Deere tractor. Now again, single digit day, it's been single digits at night for, I don't know, the last few days at least and been very cold uh, overall. But we had to jump the tractor. You know, I've had a lot of problems with batteries in the winter time just getting zapped. Wouldn't start up on its own, had to bring out the jumper, which I'd encourage you to get one of those just to keep on hand if you don't have one already. But fired right up after that, we're letting it warm up now, and then we're gonna run things over. Yeah, I didn't even, I thought I was gonna break this completely off. Oh, well, it broke that section off. That's good. 
Oh yeah. Lovely. What about this? Almost nothing. Like a little a little crinkle right there. I mean that's a easily ten thousand pound plus tractor. With almost no damage at all on that rhino hide. That's a wrap for us guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It's getting pretty darn cold out here. Overall, that polymer hood didn't do too bad. You know, we knew it was gonna break at some point, so we pushed the limits. Hopefully this is helpful for you to have some more confidence in the polymer hood. You know, you can break this thing, no doubt about it. You can damage that as well, but of course you are gonna be able to beat your steel hood out a little bit more than you can uh, easily repair a damaged plastic hood. Again, if you're in the market for a canopy, I suggest you consider that Rhino Hide Canopy. It's Rhino Tough. We did a whole torture test on this thing today and it's still holding up strong. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button right down below, and make sure you read through that description as well if you're in the market for a tractor or a cool tractor attachment. Or head on over to GoodWorksTractors.com. Thanks so much for stopping by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.